Good evening, lovely tubers. My name is the White Mexican, and welcome to Market Watch Investments. I have a plethora of cards that I'll be showcasing for you guys tonight. These will be my personal selections, and I do hope that you enjoy. King Things Kickstarter tonight is going to be Man Eating Treasure Chest. There's actually a kind of an obscure, little less known here. So in Europe, you can see this designated E here. Uh, Echo 106. This actually came out of Magic Ruler, where originally for us it came out of Star Deck Yu Gi. I thought this came out of like Magic Ruler or Metal Raiders or something like that, but apparently that's not true. Apparently it only came out of Star Deck Yu Gi. So um, I thought that was interesting that it had an actual core set specifically just for the Euro Prince in Magic Ruler. And uh, really quick, so we have two prints the demo pack, and of course the original print being Star Deck Yu Gi as the very infamous generation one if we look at first editions near mint or lightly played um there's a couple of onesie twosies here but very quickly they they articulate some pretty high high end value for being just a common here and if we switch over to bulk prices there's just none available which is is kind of interesting i'm not really sure um why that is i really like the artwork on that obviously these are all just commons uh, the demo pack and then the magic ruler one and apparently the magic ruler european print is like non-existent i'm not really sure maybe just because it's kind of like an obscure lesser known but i just thought that was kind of interesting it's not like too crazy but um so there's a little history merit for you guys that's a little white mexican special for you guys i think that's kind of a little absurd side of the market so okay moving on so amazon is queen duelist revolution this is the original print as a super rare really infamous set great artwork this is worth really good money if you guys have this uh unless you guys you know it's cool artwork if it's, you know if you, you like amazon stuff i personally like amazon stuff as well i think they have really cool artwork but first edition copies lightly played are going for 14 bones they got some pretty good value and then near mints go to for about 15 for the a onesie two c stacks here um it looks like there's a the first stack here available a stack of five is around 15 bones for that near mint first edition there's a stack of three here and i'm pretty sure that that is it for the stacks unless you want to get an italian ones for some reason the italian european prints are a little bit more pricier um so pretty good money on that um really cool artwork and again i just really like amazon us in general look really cool so pretty proud of this next one intercept wave so this for the longest time this one was for like like around one to three bones very very affordable it's uh hightailed up all the way up to a market price of uh, around six plus bones when you factor in this uh, one bone shipping again this is for the ultimate rare variants uh, original prints of dawning out of shining darkness apparently this is the only print i don't remember i think if it was like super or rare uh the other variant from the same set but these are the highest rarity as the ultimate rare is exclusive what i'm going to be talking about um and yeah these are these have like doubled in price um since that's been quite some time since i reviewed this if you check bulk prices it even articulates more value first stack is a five stack here lightly played first edition for 13 bones and then stacks for near mint first edition are 15 so pretty proud about that it's pretty interesting um again it was for the longest time this is a very very affordable ultimate rare it was kind of like a, a you know on the lower end but now it's it has a little bit more value so that's pretty cool sell target if you guys bought in bulk like i did next is gonna be a mystical uh ref panel for some reason i i don't really know what this is used in i'm not really sure if this is good if it's not good i kind of read this and um it doesn't really seem like that big of a deal really cool artwork though so this is a secret rare out of duelist revolution again a really really great set um probably because it's a solo print you don't see an option to check other versions so this is a solo print and it is high rarity secret rare and it is from a very infamous set set duelist revolution so sorry mark price on this for first edition copies is going to be lightly played for around 20 bones for first edition light cop uh, light played and then near mints are going to go up to a whopping 75 bones i really don't know why what what is going on with this um i think this is an amazing sell target again really cool artwork you know great great that's a high rarity of secret rare and a really great set um there's a single stack of uh, bulk pricing two play sets and these happen to be european italiano for around 23 for lightly played so again if you take off stacks in general more specifically obviously if you have the near mint copies i don't know it goes quickly up significantly more than double from like 20 from lightly played first to about 75 plus for near mint first edition. so i don't know what's going on with this probably just because it's a solo print and there's not a lot on the market but i think this is an amazing sell target i don't know who's buying these but there's always got to be a time and a place so moving on is going to be guardian ethos this is going to be the original print secret rare again donning out of stardust overdrive 
Uh, this card is really great artwork. Um, I'm not really sure what the history merit is behind this. I'm sure there was a couple formats a long time ago. This is very popular. I really like the artwork. And again, it's got the lighter hollow foils here, which will look really, really great. In my personal opinion, I think Secret Rares look really great when they have this like ember gold shine gloss. A first first edition copies Lego plate is, is almost a phantom under 300 bones, so 299 bones for the first uh, onesie set of lightly played, and then there is no near mints on the this this platform here for these lightly played to near mint for first editions. Um, there's a stack of two here for 300 for lightly played first, but that's pretty much it. There's no there's no option for bulk prices on this, so uh, very very limited with Guardian Ethos. Next is going to be Charge of the Light Brigade. So I'm a huge Light Sword fan. It's very splashable. You can do a lot with Light Sword. I really, really like kind of the whole background of them. And they look really great too. And this is Duelist Generous, Duelist, the Duelist Gen Genesis as the original print OG Secret Rare. Very, very expensive card. We got Raiko here looking like a, like all, you know, sudden, looking pretty good, shining, standing at attention here in the center. And uh, these are insanely good value. First edition copies for these original secrets lightly played is 240 bones for lightly played. And that is for a one stack. And then if you want near mint first edition, it's going to go all the way up to 335 bones for near mint first edition. There's two pages of availability. If we switch over to bulk prices, there's a few here. Lightly played stacks start at 260 for lightly played first edition and then a uh, stack of place one play set here for your mint first edition is 387 bones and then bottoms out at 500 bones after that from the infamous core tcg really, really love the seller a lot buy from them all the time um so there's also alternative versions of course there's several different variants super variants personally i like the the special edition super rare variants these are the ones that i actually play like in games and duels and stuff there's also the astral pack five super rares which i think are pretty cool too but i just i don't know i i i, I guess these ones would be a little bit more valuable but i just i don't know i like the coloring on these ones better so personally i just run these and they're just they're very affordable they're they're, they're easy easy access accessibility so then we have some commons that no one really cares about because that's you know common so all right moving on Preparation of the rights, original print our Star Just Overdrive. Again, these are some pretty heavy hitter infamous sets, and this card is an amazing sell target. Again, if this is um, not the only rarity that we have, but this is the original rarity as the super rare dining out of this core set. And starting market price for first editions, lightly played is 35 bones, and that's actually happens to be for a five stack. There is a two near mints here, starting market price is gonna be 42 bones for near mint first edition. Um, and then that's pretty much it. There is like this is it. There's like a quarter page. Um, so not a lot of availability, so it's probably why it's holding this price point. A really great card. Love the artwork. Again, I'm a big Fairies Herald player, so I really like this card in general. Um, of course, there is a couple other al alternatives. High rarity being a ultra rare reprint. Um, personally, I really do like, I think it was the Secret Forces. I really love Secret Forces. If you guys have time, I really highly recommend you take a look at this set. There's a lot of really great cards that are very affordable. And I'm actually going to get into some Necros stuff uh, later on in this video that we'll review. Um, but personally, the if you're not going to go for the original Super First Editions, which are obviously very good money, uh, the Secret Forces Supers are really, really great alternatives for the First Editions exclusively. And then, you know, if you guys like the Disgusting Rarity of Ultra Rare, you guys go for the Battles of Red Legend uh, variant as well. Okay, Medion, the Time Lord, is going to be next, so Photon Shockwave. Photonic Shockwave as Secret Rare. Um, kind of silly artwork, really, really great effect. A lot of the Time Lords actually surprisingly have some pretty insane effects. The deck in general, as a whole, I don't really like the the, the deck as like the whole but like onesie twosie if you, you kind of tech them in they have some pretty strong effects and i'm pretty sure if i'm not mistaken this was the the first time lord and it just dawned in this set quite some time ago um, by itself before it got all the other support so this is really great stuff um you can pause the video read the effect here if you guys don't know what this does um it's it's really cool i'm a huge anti-meta player and this card is just like really insane personally i think this card's great it's very affordable too we're looking at first edition copies of course it's high rarity secret rare which is really great uh, stack here of near mint first edition is under three bones 245 plus shipping and there's another stack here for under four bones so even before bulk prices there's some pretty good um, pickups here on this one so i think that this is a really undervalued card really really strong card and again just kind of shows white mexican some of my anti-meta is coming out okay uh, Fact Filler is going to be next. I think this is another amazing sell target. This is going for some pretty good money. So this is the original print ultra rares, not the ultimate rares. 
the ultra rares from duelist revolution really another great infamous old core set here starting by first edition copies lightly played first edition is gonna be 30 bones and then if you want a near mint copy it's gonna go all the way up to 37 bones there's two pages of availability and if we switch over to bulk prices they're just non-existent so again i think that is uh, an amazing sell target if you have it i personally have some of these myself of course there always has to be a buyer um, but this is a, articulated some pretty gay, great value specifically for that variant of course we have the ultimate rares which aren't being shown here my personal favorites are the duelist saga ultra rares these look really really great again i bag on ultra rares all the time but there's some very small part of the market that i like including dual saga which is part of the ultras that i like this is a really great one to take a look at but my all-time favorite specifically for aesthetics and playability is actually going to be the order of chaos special edition super rares which actually these look like they have articulated some good value as well let's go ahead and take a look at bulk prices for this so um lightly played stacks place at a three is going up to six bones so for the longest time this was like one two three bones this is articulated some pretty good value for um, for you know and it's a great it's a great super rare very very old so personally again I think that this is my to go to variant let's really quick since we're here we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some bulk prices for the dual saga ultras again this is not normal ultra rare it's got like this like lightsaber looking wave to it. it's really great and then stacks for these have are gone up again this is fluctuate up and down but it's on a higher end note stack of 17 near mint for session of course uh, 16 bones so um, really really good value in general I don't know if this is just and this is always in and out in and out in and out and it's just a great card in general um, so I'm not sure if you're seeing more play now but the prices are reflecting so if you guys have bulk prices I think it's a good time to sell this card next is gonna be Psalm warning again so Duelist Revolution same set this is the original not the ultimate rares the just the ultra rare variants here and these are also going for pretty good money well I know personally several years ago when I was still in Japan I was picking up my copies for eight eight to ten range for near mint lightly played first edition exclusively from this set and again i'm not really a big fan of ultra rare but this does look very very smooth and sharp again there's just something about duos revolution this was a really infamous set and they really just manufactured the cards really great and the hollow foil looks really great specifically for these ones and there's a couple other variants that i'll be going into but starting market price for first edition copies lately played is gonna be 14 bones for a onesie stack and then if you want near mint first edition copies they're gonna go to about 19 bones I'm going to switch back to lightly played and near mint and then let's go ahead and take a look at bulk prices it doesn't look like there's an option to do bulk prices unfortunately these are all onesies stacks so that would be advantage for you guys if you guys want to sell and you guys have do bulk do have bulk prices to sell that'd be an advantage for you but overall in general i think this is articulated some good value and i think this is a great sell target if you guys have some extra copies looking at alternative versions of course there is the original ultimate rares from the same set which aren't going to show up because i have to search those um separately um again just like effect failure there's a dual saga variant which is very very affordable this looks great um i love both of them i love the original duelist revolution and the dual saga almost like equally probably the dual saga a little bit more just because it has the little extra like plush on the the hollow falling itself um they're both really great though um and these are like here's some italian ones it looks like which is pretty cool for two bones a piece, near mint, first edition, three stack. And then right here, something about Italian, man. There's a lot of Italian auto stuff that's been popping up on this platform. Is that just like the white Mexican? Have you guys noticed that? There's been a lot of Italian stuff that's been coming up on here. So, okay, and then uh, that quickly jumps to about 13 bones after that, and then 20. So, articulates value when you get towards the bottom of the stacks. Um, also, there is the 10 super rares from 2011 super rares. Again, just like Effect Veiler, I really like these super rares. They look really, really nice. They're very, for the most part, very affordable. I mean, maybe they've gone up here. Let's check out the stacks. Stacks are, well, let's do some realistic conditioning here. Near mint, lightly played. They're about three bones. So there's a five stack here, lightly played, three bones. 16 stack near mint for three bones from the infamous core TCG. Uh, two pages of bulk prices so not too bad again uh, this card was really great for a long time it was like one two bones it's really around that price now it's like around three four so um this is a really great alternative if you guys don't want to um do the dual saga ultra rares so i mean yeah these two are kind of tied and you have the super so completely up to you guys and of course you know for the big shots you have the ultimate rares which are very very expensive great collector's cards i would never play the ultimate rare if i had in a first edition ultimate rare. i would just slap it in two sleeves and put it in a top loader and just look at how beautiful it is and wait for it to continue as it does 
uh, with a lot of the older ultimates increased value. Okay, so I may get strung up for this, but I personally think, not all, so please hear me out, some of the gold secrets from premium gold and premium gold infinite gold i know a lot of people bag on this a lot me too i'm totally on the boat there's a lot of these cards that look like total trash but some of them actually look really really great uh, really quick i'm just going to kind of give you a preview of i'm looking at just the gold secret rares the golds are total trash but specifically for the gold secret rare blend hybrids these are what these look like they're pretty great uh, in my personal opinion, not all of them, but some of them are better than others, and they actually look pretty, pretty cool, in my opinion. Um, and then this is infinite, infinite gold here. These are all exclusive. You can see here I have the filter on the gold secrets exclusively. You got some Cosmos stuff here, which is really cool. Stardust Charge Warrior, I'm beginning into uh, Hope Harbinger here shortly. And um, I, I never realized this before. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And one of my friends told me that Cosmos was based off of Star Wars. And I didn't really think about it. But now that I actually look at the cards, like it's it's pretty obvious that it's, it's a playoff Star Wars. So I feel kind of silly for not realizing that earlier. But I think that's really cool. I really do like Cosmos. They have a really cool engine and a pretty good fan basis in general. Pretty big following. And it's really great that they're a playoff of Star Wars. I think that's really, really cool. Um, so for, for specifics, number 38. So... Personally, I think this is the best variant. I think we have maybe a common and a super. I'll get into the alternative versions in a little bit, but this is worth some pretty good money. This picture doesn't capture it all, but I think it does a relatively good job of um, how great I think this looks. Again, this is just you know my personal opinion. I think this is one of the secret gold secrets that looks really great. Um, near mint stacks to 17 first editions. Near mints are about 15 bones. And then there's um, a couple pages here. Let's go ahead and just check the bulk prices. So pretty much 15 bones across the board for regardless near mint. Like I paid for first edition. If you guys want um, some onesie twosies, again, it's 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 the same. It's going to be around 14 bones. So this is one of my all-time favorite, if not one, if not my favorite rank eight. I really really love rank eights, and this is just such a strong card. Um, high attack, great control effect. It's a light. It's got really cool artwork. And again, this gold seeker rare rarity looks really, really, really great, in my personal opinion. Um, so the Cybernetic Horizon super rares, uh, special edition super rares, are the only other copies apparently that we have here in the TCG. And let's take a look at what bulk prices are going for those. And it looks like those are going for about seven bones. So healthy alternative, if you guys want, it is a, a worse um, aesthetically pleasing in my personal opinion. But that's up to you guys. Uh, Bizel of the Diabolic Dragons is going to be next. So again, this is the gold secret. Um, I really, really like this. Uh, this is a little bit faded. It, it looks a lot better. Um, in person, this is a lot more affordable. Starting market price, this is about uh, three bones for first edition lightly plays. And then your answer about three. So pretty much three across the board. We'll go ahead and take a look in bulk prices. Jumps to about four bones for lightly played, then almost about like five, but be aware of this uh, four bones shipping for the near mints. Alternatively, there is the secret rares from Legendary Collection Kaibage, the standard secret, which are great. You know, no no disrespect to that. that. Those look really great too. Personally, I prefer the gold secrets. I think they look a little bit better, but if you guys are not into gold secrets, there is the standard secrets. And then there's this uh, common that normally cares about. Okay, next is going to be the uh, Dragon Necro Nether Soul Dragon. This is, uh, of course, the Gold Secret, and this looks really great as well. I think this also got an Ultra Rare reprint, which we'll get into shortly. But these are going for about seven bones. I'm a huge zombie player. Ever since Zombie Horde came out, completely changed the engine, made it a lot faster. I really, really got into zombies when this structure came out. And this is obviously a to-go-to card, the Super Poly, one of the greatest uh, Super Poly targets for the zombie deck, so it's being, you know, all the stuff's being showcased. Seven bone starting market price, pretty much all across board, near mint, lightly played. If we go into bulk prices, it's going to be about eight bones for this playset here of eight, and then bombs out at about 11 plus bones for the, the 19 stack here. Alternatively, if you guys want to be gross and get an ultra rare, there is an ultra rare, but it's a little bit more affordable, um, but it is an ultra rare, and, um, you know, it doesn't look, I guess, terrible. A fusion's in general i really love like purple fusion cards so again it's kind of like nor here nor there it's just i i personally don't like ultra rare but that's just that's just me okay next is gonna be black cluster soldier i love the artwork on this and fun fact this is actually the highest rarity that we have of this um there's some other rarities that are pretty great like the dual terminal seven rares and then of course we have the duels pack uh battle city super rares 
Um, all these other ones are commons besides this rare. Um, I guess it's, there is a super rare that came out of speed duels, if you guys are into speed duel stuff. But as far as like normal TCG, non-speed duel stuff, this is the highest rarity. as an ultra rare here. Um, this is from Starter Deck Yugi, uh, Starter Deck Yugi Evolution. Again, uh, I did a stent on the Dark Magicians for this, which I can kind of briefly go over shortly here. Um, onesie twosies, again, this is for collectability purposes. So you have to go first edition, like, you know, 99.9% .9 of the stuff that I talk about here on this channel. And these are about four-ish bones, give or take, for some lightly played first editions for the onesie twosies. But more importantly, if you start to look at the stacks, there's just really not a lot available. First stacks for lightly played first edition is about seven bones, and then it bottoms out at almost 12 at the bottom here. And there's, you know, three, three, and four. So there's not tons and tons of availabilities, more specifically for the bulk prices. And this is just an amazing. I love the artwork on this card. This is all, again, for collectability purposes, but something to keep an eye on. Really quick, uh, I want to go and take a look again. I think another really great investment from this is the Dark Magicians. Uh, again, White Max can theory what I consider Generation 1, 2, and 3. One being the 2002 Star Deck Yugi and Star Deck Kaibas. The Ultras for Blue Eyes and Dark Magician. This being Generation 2 being uh, Yugi Kaiba Evolution. Again, these are just for the first editions exclusively. More specifically for Near Mint. Um, there's some onesie twosies here that are under a bone. Uh, well, onesies here, and then there's a two stack here. They're around four. If we switch over to lightly played, there's a little bit more. Um, here is this is this is great. Like I think for this, the 16 a fat. If I would buy all 16 of these, I actually um, can't. I got I got banned. I I had too many complaints with the seller, so he like banned me or blocked me or whatever. So I can't. I personally I I would. I honestly could say if I wasn't blocked by the seller, I would buy like all 16 of these. I think this is an insane price point under two bones for a fat stack of 16 for lightly played first editions. Um, I really, really believe in this card. I have a really great passion for the Generation 1, 2, and 3 Star Deck Yugi and Kaiba uh, sets. Um, and, and it goes mirrored for the, you know, for the evolution for Kaiba. So I don't want to take too much time, but, so I'm going to move on here. But um, really great, a really great side uh, side project that I've been working on. Okay, so Green Kappa is going to be next. And this is Hobby League 1. I believe this is the highest rarity that we have. We have dual terminal six commons, which are pretty great, and then a plethora of other um, commons. There's even a starfoil, which looks pretty cool. But this is the original print at highest rarity as a super rare, very, very old Hobby League. Not only Hobby League, but Hobby League 1, the very first Hobby League, which is really great. If you're looking at near mint copies, pretty good money. It's around 24-ish bones after you factor in shipping for lightly played, and then near mints are going to be about 26 plus. Three pages of availability. If we switch over to bulk prices, the first stack is going to be 24 for lightly played for a playset, and then it quickly trickles up after that. And then you want near mint. It goes all the way up to 53 bones. Oh, Phantom under 53 bones for near mint stacks. So very, very uh, incredible price jump on that. Okay, next is going to be. We'll get to that. So Secret Forces. Secret Forces is a really great set. Again, I really highly recommend. If you guys have time, take a look at it. It's there's a lot of really really great stuff that's very affordable. Um, Necros of Bionic is gonna be next. So this is the original highest rarity of this card. Really great artwork. Really powerful card and a really good fan basis behind Necros. I believe like a lot of players, a lot of fanboys behind this deck. And let's go ahead and take a look at some prices here. So starting market price for this is going to be. 28 ish bones for lightly played first editions and if you want near mint copies then go up to 33 there's four pages of availability and if we switch over to bulk prices for lightly played first editions a stack of 10 is going to be starting at 37 that's going to go to about 39 and they're at for that's actually they're both lightly played so there's no near mint stack so it's kind of interesting so you guys have stacks for near mint maybe you guys want to list them uh, necros of trishula is going to be next this is, of course, the original print. Secret Rares, really great aesthetics, amazing artwork on both of these. I really, really applaud the artists on these. These have really, really great artwork. Of course, they have amazing rarities of Secret Rare, and they have the original prints that don this uh, this this deck core archetype storyline. So it's really great. Um, there's some Italian ones here for roughly around 14, and then um, Lightly Plays are going to be around, four, around the same 14. And if you want some near mint copies, they're going to go to about 15. 
put this filter back on for light plate near mint check out bulk prices so for english bulk prices stack of three it's gonna be about 17 but be aware of the shipping here and it's gonna jump all the way up to almost 22 a phantom under 22 for a four stack and then bottoms out at about 25 plus the uh, five bone shipping here so um again if you guys have bulk prices i know i have a, i personally have a lot of these sealed first edition boxes sealed of secret forces that's how much i really really love this set it was it, it it's hasn't really seen a lot of fluctuation there's not really a lot of spikes sometimes if like some of the band stuff comes up uh this will be a kind of a hot ticket item but right now it's been really low under the radar and more of a kind of the forgotten like lower end of sets for first edition sealed boxes but i'm still very very happy that i have several boxes of this personally there's a lot of really great stuff like vanity's emptiness so vanity's emptiness obviously this and maxi were one of the two most anticipated cards to come off the ban list it's been you know a couple weeks now or i don't remember maybe like a month or two since we had the ban list so um try to keep in keep track with that but this is uh this didn't come off the list it's gonna come off the list i promise you it's just a matter of time just like maxi it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when and there's some pretty good availability on this there is a stack of four here for under two bones you're at first edition for 171 there's some italiano ones if you guys are into some euro prints uh for about two bones there's a fat stack of 48 and then here are some english ones for two bones near rent first edition so i think these three opportunities more specifically for these two english ones are really really great i personally would recommend jumping on these these aren't going to stay this affordable this always fluctuates around bandless season we're kind of on the low because this didn't get released so there's some great availability for that so alternatively there is of course the secret rares which are really great maybe even if you want a first edition original common from star spike blast that's a very very great infamous set really quick since we're here let's go ahead and take a look at some first edition prices lightly played first edition is going to be around almost 16 bones for lightly played if you want near minute it's going to be about 18 plus 18 19 and then if we take a look at bulk prices it's going to be about 20 19 bones so stack of five first edition near minute it's going to be about uh, 19 bones so really, really great stuff on that. Max C is going to be next. So this is really, really difficult. Long gone are the days when you can pick up bulk prices of this for like five bones. Like these five bones, five bones, five bones. A long, long, long time ago, they were like around three, four. But the majority of the time, like the ideal price is to pick these up for lightly played near mint five bones and bulk prices. Um, right now, again, obviously this didn't get released off the list, so it's kind of in a lower turn point. But Max C is so infamous, it's so beloved, it, it, it just really struggles to go down in general, all across the board. Uh, every variant is worth really, really good money. I mean, if we can see stacks here, Lightly Played starting at 17 bones, Lightly Played near mint is 18, and there's a pretty good, um, at least a solid one page of stacks available for this. This is personally my favorite. I have a strange fascination with hand traps and super rare. It's still helpful. It still looks nice. You can still play it, and when you're in a duel and you're playing, it doesn't really matter if it gets slightly played because, you know, it's just a super rare, but it still looks great in my personal opinion. So the super rares are my to go to personally for this card. Um, I also have a lot of the first editions, which I think are really great. The ultimate runners look really, really great, but they are ungodly expensive, and it's just very difficult to get them. They do look great. I will praise them for the aesthetics, but personally, I would much rather have an original OG secret rare variant from Storm of Ragnarok exclusively for the first editions. And looking into market price, uh, lightly played first edition is 130 bones. Near mint first edition onesie stack is 135. If we go into bulk prices, uh, near mint is going to be 100 and th again 35 for the stack, and then for well these are all near mint, so you can kind of see the calculations here. But really, really great. By far one of the most infamous band cards of all time. Really amazing. All right, next is going to be pot of greed, and this is the highest rarity as the ultimate rare from duelist pack kaiba one of the most infamous magic cards of all time amazing artwork amazing rarity i have a few copies of these first edition myself and i'm really quite proud of them they look great it looks like there is uh, an italiano one here for 174 near mint and Uh, there is the first English lightly played uh, 170 for first edition and then it looks like near mints bottom out at a grand a whopping grand so a quick quick uh, turnover in price for that one and then uh, these are all one stack so uh, there's no bull prices available for this 
Alternately, there's a lot of really great ver versions. Obviously, they have the um, Dark Beginning Super Rares, which are really great. We have the original Magic Ruler Generation 1 set. Three, I believe. Legend of Blue Eyes, Mal Raiders, and then Magic Ruler. Uh, first editions are just like ungodly expensive, and they have like the actual magic stamped here, which are really great. We have Legendary Collections 3 and Legendary Collections 4, which I have nothing but praise for these sets. Some of the most uh, iconic collector's cards and really great rarities. Supers, Ultras, Secrets, First Edition copies exclusively are really great. So we got double parallel rarity for the Secrets on uh, Joey and Yugi, Legendary Collection 3 and 4 for those. those were, uh, so if you're not getting the Ultimate Rare, I really like this, the Secret Rares a lot. The Super Rares are pretty cool because Dark Beginning and it's Dark Beginning 1, the first Dark Beginning, which is really great, which is definitely part of Generation 1. And, collectability timeline in my per in my personal opinion um so and, and this is another thing i'm sorry i made a mistake so legend of blue eyes white dragon for us here in north america was the you know set one generation one set one was where we got the rares and when you have the magic stamp and they're insanely expensive for the first editions exclusively and this is another one weird euro print so something about this offsetting with europe you can see the designator echo here echo 129 where like cards that were in lob were in magic ruler and anyway it's kind of just like a side note here there also is uh the starfoil rares from uh Epic Dong, especially exclusively for the first editions, are really great too. But ideally, really, you're gonna wanna if you're gonna go with like hard investments, the first edition ultimates and the first edition secrets were really gonna be the ideal. Or and personally, of course, this one as well uh, for first editions exclusively because it's the original print. Um, even though it is a rare, that's highly offset by the magic stamps, and that is like the one of of the one of, and it's very very old and just you know the firsts of firsts. Next is gonna be Heavy Storm. Love this card. Uh, so we have the the. I forget the the one that's basically like either Regeki or Harpy's Feather Dresser and you kind of choose something like Vortex or Lightning or something like that. Um, and we have Harpy's Feather Duster. Like, it's insane. I, I know that this, you can kind of get plays off destroying your own magic and trap cards in back row and it's kind of a combo piece. But, I mean, we have that new card and we have Harpy's Feather Duster. So, I think it's a matter of time before we get this pulled. This is the original magic stamped. Um, super rares out of Generation 1 set 2 Mel Raiders, really, really great stuff. I'm looking at sp exclusively the first editions for collectability purposes. Uh, the first English print I played first edition is 454 bones. There's actually two of them. And then if you want a near mint copy, these uh, articulate some pretty insane values. Starting market price will be 200 bones, the first first edition near mint. And here's a photo of the next one. So very, very, very pricey. Um, if I'm still able to see if there's any bulk prices, of course, this is insanely old, so there's no bulk prices on that. So really, really great stuff. Um, the, really, this is the, the best print. Um, because the first editions are so insanely expensive, really quick, I want to go back. Um, this is so insane, and I really, really appreciate this. It's kind of sacrilegious, but I, I, I would actually, depending on the price for near mints and lightly played, as long as they're the original, not like the, the newer reprinted ones, but the original Magic Step ones, I would even recommend... Uh, investing in the unlimiteds uh, which is really really sacrilegious for me i always invest in uh, first editions because this is such as an, an, an insanely old card an ancient card generation one set two hollow foil amazing artwork powerful card uh, been kind of off off on off the list i think a couple times at least twice if i'm not mistaken and it's been on the list for quite some time some amazing history merit behind it um it doesn't really look like you're gonna kind of cut off even with that though the first bull price is this fat sack of 32 um, but they are really I was thinking maybe if it's like two three bones That would be a good investment for both prices, but unfortunately starting my price is on nine and again You got to be really careful because they have like the These sets were reprinted and they're the reprints have spell card not magic card and when you're buying on platforms like this when there's no actual pictures to verify that it has that history merit of that printed magic card yeah, it's kind of a gamble at that so maybe maybe kind of disregard that last one but for other versions uh hobby league 2 apparel ultras look amazing the gold series like generation one the very first gold series 2008 looks really really great um but really out of that that's that's really gonna be pretty much it i mean legendary collections is legendary collections i love legendary collections but they're just ultra rare so it's kind of like nor here than there so, um, really, ideally, the Mel Raiders is going to be the best, and then if not, maybe the Gold Series, or maybe even the Hobby League 2, which look really, really great, but doesn't look like there's high numbers on that. So, really quick, 
Hidden Arsenal Chapter 1, I just wanted to take note of medium of the ice barrier for bulk prices. There isn't too many bulk prices here. There's this fat stack at 32 um, for the dual terminal commons here. This is really great, kind of one of the lesser knowns. Um, I really I really support and advocate for the set. I feel like there's a lot of negativity behind the set. There's a lot of complaining behind the set. Um, a lot of people thought these were all came off as cheap makeshift reprints. Um, and it was kind of just like a, a, a trash ultra rare set that they made DT to sell better. But I think it really worked. I really do appreciate how this really brought down and, and made dual terminal cards available at really affordable price points. And some of them got rarity bumps, which I think is really nice. But um, so yeah, it, it's about like a half bone for these. And there's a couple stacks. But you'll notice that obviously the commons are a, a lot more like uh, lower ratios than the hollow foils because you get more hollow foils in each pack. Next meeting, Notoria Rose Whip. Again, just a really great control card, tuner, awesome stuff. Um, this one, there's only a, a two playset stack of six here for a half bone plus this bone shipping. So um, again, like these for stacks, there's not a lot of availability. Wabaku, of course, got the mirrored reprint treatment of a DT common here. And these are actually quite good money. If you pull these, these, uh, these are worth more than the majority of the uh, the ultra hollow foils here. Starting market price for stacks is going to be around um, almost nine bones. That goes to 10 after that for near mints. And the bottom's out at 20 for the stack of 25. That's pretty much it. There's just not a lot of bulk prices for uh, the commons. Really quick, I I'm just out of curiosity. It's been some a while since I've I've taken a look at this set. I'm, I'm really curious where skill drain is at right now. Uh, so it's around 16, 17-ish to 18 and then bulk prices is going to be about 21 plus so it's pretty much around the same the last time i checked it was around 20 bones so it's pretty much for onesie twosies it's a little more affordable um so interesting fluctuations i think as the years go on the fluctuations are going to continue to go up and down up and down up and down the most important thing to take note of of this set is that it took really expensive dual terminal cards and made them available all across the board for very very affordable price points overall we're seeing a really great turn down i was actually really surprised i didn't think that we were going to see more affordable prices than when this first was just blasted on the market and everyone was slapping these cracking them open and slapping on the market um, but they have actually increased even more, which I think is great. I think it's really, really great. Even though I really advocate advocate for this set, um, I think it's great that they're, the prices are continuing to decrease because it just makes them very, very easy to skip up in, in high bulk prices now. And just to wait. This set is a long-term investment set. You need to buy in bulk now when these are all like under a bone, to, like anything from like two bones, three bones, and under. Bull prices are really really great like even like tri like trisha like trisha was like around three four like start at like five and three to four and now it looks like um it's like around you know two bones maybe even less um mvp of the set is going to be nateria beast nateria beast is a really great one so really quick um i just wanted to highlight that buy this in bulk i think this is an amazing control card it's an amazing aesthetic of rarity um, that's another really great one. Skill drain, obviously, if it calms down, um, Wabaku's great, but that's that's at a price point that's not really advantageous for investing in. Um, and then there's Bamboo Shoot. Wherever Bamboo Shoot is, that's another one that I think is really, really great that you guys want to keep an eye on. But this is a really good set. Honestly, Like this is like the ideal time. Um, I don't want to talk too much about this this set because I feel like it's kind of like a sore topic for most players. They don't really believe in the set. I feel like I'm like the only Yugi tuber that really is advocating for this set. But I'm telling you guys, this is a really really great set. Um, I personally invested in singles, open, split, single, secondary market, and sealed product. And I don't really usually invest in sealed product, but I really do believe in the set. Um, again, I have to put emphasis though, this is not a short-term investment. This is a long-term investment set. I'm talking five to ten years before we see a good return on these cards. Okay, next is going to be Khmer Tech Fortress. So this is pretty great. Uh, again, Dual Saga is you know just a great set in general. It's a lot of great rarity, very unique. The only set had great history merit to be the only set in all of the TCG to have this 
you know, very unique rarity that is uh, Duelist Saga. And um, this has gone up for the longest time. Like, I have so many of these. This is a great sell target if you're like me and you kind of bought these in bulk. They were like well under a bone for like bulk prices. And now for some reason, I don't know if, if it... It's a great card. It's a great tech card. You know, I mean, there's not too many cyber dragon players out there but there's some pretty hardcore cyber dragon players they like follow it to death and um, it's a great side tech card for them to against them i don't know if there's any other combo this is being used in where it's grown popularity um it has articulated in value though so um for bulk prices we can see here and again it's incredible because for the longest time this card was like well under a bone and now it's like 10. It's like 10 the stack of six near it first is 10 that's for italiano and then it goes to 12 plus after that this is for stacks obviously it's a little bit more affordable for like the onesie twosies but even then um uh this, the, there's like italian ones for a little over six and then english ones start at like pretty much all phantom under eight so seeing how this card was under a bone and now it's like at like eight to like 10 plus um, it's incredible. Really, really great stuff. Of course, there is a couple other versions here. Personally, I do like the Dual Saga variant verse, but if you guys like Shonen Jump Ultra Rare stuff like I do, um, I think I have one single copy of this. This is pretty great, but really, these are going to be like the ideal prints you want to look into. So I just wanted to highlight, if you guys have that, this is a great sell target. Okay, so really quick to wrap things up here so speed duels again i don't know anything about speed duels i've never played speed duels i'm not a big avent fan or investor in speed duels but this new set dropped and some of the secret rares got gained some popularity and hype a lot of people are talking about this and i think it's well justified there are some really great secret rare reprints so these are the secrets i filtered only to the secrets and i think that you know konami's really trying to push for um better sales for speed duel because obviously it didn't really kind of take off as they expected at least here in north america in my personal opinion um what i want to talk about is actually going to be dd warrior lady because we've never had a secret rare reprint and i love this card this goes all the way back to generation one dark crisis is a super rare and then also don zalug as well which is like these are some of my like really old school favorite cards and the sheer fact that we got secret rares of these is really really cool i'm sure you guys know you guys just have to check out this set there's some pretty it's not these aren't the only two cards that are you know cool secret reprints but I'm most excited about DD Warrior Layer Secret Rare and Don Zalug. So really quick, we're going to go ahead and take a look at bull prices for these. I'm trying to gauge these, seeing if these are going up or going down. It looks like, you know, naturally it follows that they tend to decrease over time for a certain extent. And then they hit a point where they get scarce and they start to go back up and it kind of flips over. So it looks around four bones, a stack of four here for four, four bones near at first edition and around the same for a stack of 13. So pretty much around four bones for bulk prices. I'm definitely thinking about picking up some copies of these. I'm just waiting kind of for like the perfect pinpoint to pull the trigger on this because I really want Secret Rare DD Warrior Ladies. For Don Zalug, this is a little bit more affordable. We're going to go straight into the bulk prices, and this is going to be about 2.5 for near mint first edition stacks, uh, 14 here, and then about three bones for the stack right here. So, um, again, yeah, roughly around 2, 2.53 for Don Zalug. So, those are really, really cool. That's what it looks like if you guys don't know. It's pretty awesome. Um, and then lastly, so Battle Pack, Epic Dong, Star Foils. These are like makeshift dual terminal. Again, Dual Tour got discontinued, obviously, until Chapter 1, Hidden Arsenal Chapter 1 came out and kind of revamped it, rebroke the whole system all over again. But before this came out, this was pretty much all we had before all the Battle Pack stuff comes out. This is the best Starfoil for, you know, Starfoil for Battle Pack rarities. I know they had, like, Mosaic. I don't like Mosaic. I think Mosaic is really, you know, cheap and trashy compared to Starfoil. Starfoil looks really, really good. I really like all the, like, pinpoint Starfoiling here. And there's some pretty great cards. Um, I just want to kind of do, like, a flash review. Ideally, what I love and kind of like the most popular topic of this is Injection Fairy Lily and Tour Guide. I think these for the first editions, again, first editions exclusively, not the Unlimiteds, for not the rares, not the black rares, not the commons, anything like that. The the first edition hollow foils um, are really, really great. So I wanted to dip into those, but I wanted to kind of just flash through here and show you guys There's some really, really great iconic cards. For the first edition exclusively, exclusively for the star foils. These are all star foil. I'm looking, you know, filter here so you guys can see. There's some really great stuff. So if you guys have time, I really think you should dip into this. Just you know, slap on mirror these these filter settings. Check out the star foils exclusively for the first editions. And there's just some really really great cards like Change of Heart. That's really cool. Change of Heart. I love Change of Heart. Um, a lot of old school stuff. We got like Air Knight. 
um, Creature Swap, Monster Gate, Fiendish Chain, Fabled Raven. There's just a lot of really, really great uh, old school iconic cards. And I think this is just a really, really special, amazing rarity. So if you guys have time, you should definitely check it out. Really quick to wrap things up, I'm going to end on an up note here. Take a look at some Starfoil First Edition Tour Guides. So these are around 3.54-ish for Lightly Played, and your mints are 5. What we care about more specifically is bulk prices, but it doesn't look like there's availability to do bulk prices. There's three pages of availability. For the longest time, these were like under a bone, two, three bones, and they've you know slowly started to articulate value with good reason. Tour Guide is you know one of the most infamous cutesy anime girl waifu cards of all time. Um, and uh, this is a really great rarity. Of course, obviously, there's a lot of other great rarities that we have of this, like the ultimate rares, which are insanely, you know, good looking, uh, but also very hard to get and very expensive. We have the secrets, dual saga treatment, the super rares from 2012 tins, which are really great. Um, and then, of course, uh, the, the Star Falls, like I said. Really quick, uh, my all-time favorite is the original Extreme Victory original print. So I wanted to take a look at the price points for first edition copies because this is where I focus the majority of my core investments for first edition secrets. That's where I, I go heavy on tour guide for collectability purposes. And that's going to be like played first edition copies. It's going to be 65 And then if you want a near mint uh, onesie, it's going to be about 95 Let's take a look at bulk prices. Bulk prices, again, 65 for first edition lightly played, and then near mint it's gonna be 105 for the stack of three. So not too many availability for the bulk prices on that. Injection Fairy Lily is gonna be next. Again, this is gonna be exclusively for the star foils and exclusively for the first editions. Uh, this card is just great in general. Obviously, a Legacy of Darkness original generation one. Secret rares are kind of where, where the, the top notch investments are, but we'll get into that shortly. These are about five bones, and these are bulk prices. So, five bones for your first edition, which is pretty nice. A stack of four, and that continues to trickle up after that. If we take off the stacks, let's do near mint and lightly played. It's a route you can get away with about four bones for onesie, twosies. But again, I really highly recommend you guys pop in here to tour guide injection fairly lily and uh, slap on mirror these filters and kind of see what the bulk prices are because this is a great card. You don't want to miss this card. I think this is a fantastic card to buy in uh, bulk bulk investment. And of course, we have the dark beginning twos and the retro pack ultra rares, which are pretty cool. Uh, but the cream of the crop here, the crown gem in the gem, royal gem in the crown here is going to be the original Generation 1 Secret Rares. I personally have several copies of this. I'm pretty sure I've already uploaded my Secret Rare Monster showcasing on my channel. So you guys can take a look at that if you guys want to see my personal stash of uh, first edition original pen injection fairy lilies. I really, really love this card. Star Mark Price is going to be around 70-ish Garotake Bones. Up one, down one for lightly played first editions, and then if you want near mint copies, it's going to be a hundred and four, a uh, hundred and uh, like a hundred and nine plus the shipping here. And let's check bulk prices. So single stack infamous core TCG for the end for the finale here. 7 stack, uh, 250 bones for near mint first edition copies, and it happens to be, you know, the only um, bulk pricing on that. Yu-Gi-Oh! has been part of my life for many years. I love the deck building, building the brotherhood, the investing. There's so many amazing and unique aspects that go into this hobby, and it's fun. It's fun to have hobbies, and it's important to have hobbies in, in life, and uh, it's, there's really great uh, aspects to this. Uh, the world is a, a really, really crazy place. Please remember to be a friend, be a brother, be a sister, uh, love and take care of each other. Always, you never really know what's going on um, in other people's lives, so please uh, be understanding and respectful of that and always love and take care of each other. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you guys are making some fantastic Yu-Gi-Oh! investments yourself. This has been a showcasing by The White Mexican, and I will see you in the next video.